Hello, my friends, Arya here. I hope your months are off to a wonderful start. Mine has been pretty pleasant, thank you for asking, and I'm very happy to have you all here once again as we continue our exploration together into the question of whether or not the worst monsters are no longer hiding in the dark, but right here in the light of the technology beaming right into our faces. Now, today's case is one I'm particularly keen to share with you all as it's not only a very unique one, but it's one I had actually known about for many years, but forgotten about until one of you reminded me of its very gruesome details during one of our live streams. So, you know, thank you for that. What can I say? I'm very lucky to be covering these cases with you all as I'm never in short supply of nightmare fuel. So that's nice. It's okay though. I have a new therapist, so uh, she can she could be the one to deal with that. But I actually have known about this case for a very long time. In fact, I think it's actually one of the first real disturbing cases I learned about because years ago when I was on internet forums and message boards, this is one of those cases that would kind of make their way around and people would say, hey, did you, did you hear about this really messed up thing that happened uh, over in Germany? That being said, I genuinely am very glad to have you here with me as we dive into the very infamous case of Armin Mivis, otherwise known as the man who somehow found someone online to murder and consume. Buckle on up, because uh, this is a graphic one. And you know what I just realized? At least now, tonight, we'll have nightmares together. Germany, a country rich in history and culture, the homeland of important historical figures such as Beethoven, Einstein, and Hasselhoff, and the birthplace of the subject of today's case, Armin Maivis, or as he's sometimes referred to, der Metzgelmeister the master butcher. I do apologize to our German viewers for butchering uh, your language. How do you say sorry in German? Es tut uns leid. Is that that's how you say sorry? Let's continue. Abandoned in childhood by his two brothers and father, Armin Mivis was left alone with his mother who was domineering and humiliated him constantly. Mivis's mother even began to create a fantasy that she was a woman of the house and her son was her servant. They would dress up in medieval clothes and they would decorate each room of the farmhouse. Until the age of 37, Mivis would live with his mother until her passing in 1999. A computer engineer, Mivis was described by his neighbors in the German town of Rottenburg as a seemingly perfect neighbor. A family next door to him said that he would socialize with them over dinner, fix their car on occasion, and even helped mow their lawn. His neighbors commented, It was clear to us that he had a different perspective on life than we did, but he was a normal person to speak to, drink a glass of beer with, just like you and me. I don't know why I did the accent, but we'll run with it. Our animator is also German, and I apologize to you too profusely, Fia. <laughs> I actually didn't think that was that bad of an accent. Let me, German viewers in the audience, let me know how bad that accent was on a scale of one to 10. But beneath the facade of being the perfect neighbor, Mivis harbored similarly dark fantasies to the many twisted individuals who we've crossed paths with here on this channel. In fact, Mivis would later state that as a child, he would fantasize about having a blonde younger brother that he could eat so that he could keep him forever. Mivis says that he always imagined boys he found attractive as his brother and he wanted to be connected to them. Mivis concluded that in order for them to be a part of him, he needed to eat them in hopes that his loneliness would disappear. After his mother's passing, Mivis was online almost every night and was speaking to approximately 400 people who were other cannibals or potential victims. Mivis found cannibal chat rooms and couldn't believe he had found people who wanted to eat or be eaten. There were people who wanted their pieces labeled like meat, who wanted to be hit with a hammer and slaughtered or barbecued like a chicken but none of them actually wanted to follow through with these dark fantasies. I mean, you really can't. Oof. In March of 2001, Mivis put out an advertisement online looking for a young, well-built man who wanted to be eaten. Now you might wonder who would actually respond to the ad with genuine interest. Surely no one would, right? Well, while there were many responses, most of them joking, Bernd Brandes, a 42-year-old microelectronics engineer from Berlin, would provide a serious reply. Brandes responded, I offer myself to you and will let you dine from my life body. Not butchery, dining. Whoever really wants to do it will need a real victim. Before agreeing to be killed and eaten, Brandes seemed to be leading a normal life with a living girlfriend. This girlfriend, Bettina, told the media that they had broken up after Brandes confided in her that he was also interested in men. Brandes and Mivis started to exchange emails, and Brandes prepared for his imminent death by selling his belongings and wiping his computer hard drive. Brandes bought a one-way ticket to Kassel, 
and on March 9th, 2001, Maivis met him at the train station. From there, they went to a chemist shop where they bought painkillers and then headed back to Armin's home. Once at the home, they retreated to Maivis' bedroom, where Brandes swallowed 20 sleeping tablets with half a bottle of schnapps. Brandes did hesitate at one point, but then stayed the course and decided to swallow the painkillers before telling Maivis, now do it. Maivis then got a video camera rolling and grabbed his kitchen knife to begin. Now is the point in the video where I say, if you're squeamish, maybe you know, don't, don't turn off the video because you know, we need that watch time. You know, I need to get paid, but. <laughs> I mean, I'm laughing, but it's true. But seriously though, it does get pretty graphic. So there's your warning. After grabbing the knife with Brandes' consent, Mivis cut off Brandes' penis. Brandes screamed for about 30 seconds, but then said he didn't feel any pain and was upset. He wanted to feel more pain. Brandes asked Mivis to cut the penis in half and so he did. Mivis washed and blanched the penis, seasoned it with salt, pepper, and garlic powder, and fried it for a short time. Brandis tried to eat his portion of the penis, but was upset because it was edible. <laughs> it wasn't edible. <laughs> what the fuck is this? What the fuck is this? What is this research document? <laughs> I'm so sorry, okay. <laughs> I genuinely wouldn't normally laugh at a victim, but you know, here in this case, you have a victim who's consented to the murder and is now complaining that his penis wasn't cooked properly. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's, it, it, I'm sorry I'm laughing. I don't know why I'm so, <laughs> I feel, I don't know why I'm laughing. I promise I will not laugh anymore. Brandis tried to eat his portion of the penis, but was upset because it wasn't edible because the meat shriveled up when it was cooked. Then the men went to the bathroom so that the now heavily bleeding Brandes, who was feeling cold, could settle into a hot bath. All while Mivis read a Star Trek novel. After being in the bath, Brandes wanted to get out. He called for Mivis, but he passed out when he stepped out of the bath. Mivis would take him to a bed where he'd drift in and out of consciousness until he never regained consciousness again. Mivis then kissed Brandes and cut his throat with a kitchen knife. After Brandes was dead, Mivis then chopped him into pieces and put him in his freezer next to his pizza. He buried Brandes' skull in his garden. Over the next few months, Mivis would cook Brandes using olive oil, garlic, salt, pepper, and nutmeg. Mivis would pair the pieces of Brandes with South African red wine, and when consuming Brandes, Mivis would use his finest cutlery and light candles on the table. He'd prepare princess potatoes and Brussels sprouts as sides. Mivis would later remark that Brandes tasted of pork. I mean, I am curious, you know, what would be the best way to cook, you know, human meat? You know, is it, uh, I guess you'd kind of want it to fall off the bones. So maybe like a, like a slow, slow roast, maybe sous vide. Uh, I need to stop talking before one of you calls the cops on me. Despite not having yet finished with all of Brandes' meat, Mivis began looking for his next victim online. Mivis got frustrated because he wasn't able to find another like Brandes. Mivis would find people who wanted to roleplay cannibalism, not actually be eaten. He began to brag about the dynamic he had with Brandes in the chat rooms. An Austrian student in the chat rooms noticed Mivis' comments and reported them to the authorities. Finally, on December 10th, 2002, federal police went to Mivis' farmhouse in Rottenburg, Germany. His house was searched for an hour and a half. They found a freezer in the kitchen with what Mivis at first claimed was packets of wild pig, but it was actually pieces of bound Brandes. In Mivis' garden, they found bones, including Brandes' skull, as well as internal organs. By the time the police arrived at the home, Mivis had already consumed 20 kilograms, roughly 44 pounds, of Brandes. On Tuesday, December 2nd, 2003, Armin Mivis appeared in court for killing, cooking, and then eating another man. Mivis stated during the pretrial that after eating Brandes, he felt more stable. And on his first day in court, he would say, I always had the fantasy, and in the end, I fulfilled it. Mivis also stated that Brandes spoke good English, and after eating him, Mivis' English improved. The case proved to be a conundrum because cannibalism is not illegal in Germany. So instead of charging Mivis with cannibalism, Lawyers charged Mivis with murder for the purposes of sexual pleasure and for disturbing the peace of the dead. The defense, however, argued that Brandes had actually given full consent to be killed and eaten. The defense even had a copy of the videotape that Mivis created of their entire evening together, where Brandes clearly gives his consent. Mivis's lawyers argued that, at worst, 
he was guilty of killing on demand or euthanasia, which only calls for five years in jail. Before we continue, please do let me know down in the comments below what you think about this very interesting conundrum because the argument is valid that Pondus consented to his own murder. I mean, this man was eating his own penis. Basically, where in the world of criminality do you think this falls under? Psychologists said that Mivis's is a case of sexual cannibalism comparable to Jeffrey Dahmer. Psychologists also stated that Mivis is sexually confused but not mentally ill. They elucidated that Mivis has difficulty understanding relationships and emotionally organizing them. And so for him, consuming another person is considered the most intimate act between him and another person. In 2004, Mivis was given eight and a half years in prison for manslaughter but a 2006 retrial resulted in Mivas being convicted of murder and given a life sentence. Allegedly, most of the jury reportedly had to go to therapy after seeing the film of the two men's encounter. I have no trouble believing that. There's also a question as to whether Mivas had actually fulfilled his fantasy. Mivas allegedly hadn't fully realized that killing Brandes wasn't part of his fantasy, that he really only wanted to consume him. In fact, in his video, he shows hesitation and prayer before cutting Brandes' throat. Mivis also reportedly did not like the idea of cutting off Brandis' penis. As of May 2020, Mivis is now allowed in public as part of a prison release program, with two police officers monitoring him, and he is allowed a hat and sunglasses so that he is not recognized. Prison officials say that Mivis is a model inmate and one of the few prisoners with whom there are no problems. Mivis states, Today I know that what I did was wrong, that this can never be the right way. The wishes, the fantasies you have, that these can never be fulfilled, and everything that you dream about will only ever remain a dream. What I did even after I've done it, I always thought it could be more than just a dream. Today, I know that it can never be. Mivis also says that since eating Brandes, he is always with me. Ah, well, uh, honestly, I... <laughs> I have no other words to kind of describe my thoughts on this case. It's it's fascinated me for years and it still fascinates me to this day. It's just such a unique case in that the victim willingly allowed himself to get murdered and eaten. If we go to our question of whether or not the worst monsters are no longer hiding in the dark and if they're actually now in the light of the technology beaming into our faces, when it comes to Armin Mivis, I think that if he didn't have access to the internet, he would not have killed anyone. Because if we're going up based on what the psychologist said, killing was never really a part of Mivas' desires. He just wanted to eat someone and he was waiting for their consent as well. It's not like he was going around willy-nilly just killing people and eating them. You know, he was actively looking for someone like Brandes and even after Brandes had passed on and Mivas was looking for someone else to consume, he couldn't find any I was gonna say any biters, <laughs> uh, you know, no pun intended, but he couldn't find anyone uh, that was willing to go through with it. And he, it's not like then he went around and started killing people, uh, you know, uh, to fulfill that fantasy. It's interesting. So I guess the argument could be made that without the internet, Ben Brandes would most likely still be alive and Armin Mivas may not be in jail for murder. But please do let me know what you think. Do you believe that even without the internet, Mivas would have found some way to fulfill his urges and actually eventually kill someone? Because I honestly don't know. Either way, thank you very much for taking the time to hang out with me. And if you have a case you'd like to fuel my nightmares with, don't hesitate to send me a cheeky little DM. In the meantime, as always, take care and stay safe online. Mm -hmm.